what are some IBE objectives? You know, whatever you choose to focus on, the objectives shift, okay? They can have a lot of different factors. So let's walk through what you really should expect. First, let's assess the risk of if something fails. That's it. So if something fails and it's, out, and it's obsolescent, you, know, you can't get it anymore, that becomes a problem. You know, it's not your fault. The part wasn't supposed to fail, right? So it's just, but it does happen. So you need to know, though, those areas of risk. And IBE can do that for you. Hey, I have this equipment that's, if it fails, I don't know if we'll be able to get a spare. At least at that point, you're in control. It also, point number two, we assess the condition of our equipment. Just think about it. You're walking through the plant. You're looking at the stuff. So first of all, you may be able to get things like thermal rise. Are my enclosures jam-packed? Are they, are they getting the cooling that they need? Right? Sometimes things get added, added to enclosures and the cooling doesn't factor in. So just, just note that. Environmental protection. You know, do I have a lot of dust, dirt, and, and contaminants getting to my equipment? Just know, those, just know those facts and then you can address them. And there's general operating conditions in the physical presence of the equipment. Just be real with it. You know, you see some scary stuff out there. I've, been, I've walked into plants and I've seen doors missing off the MCCs exposing live, live bus bar. It's real. But if you at least know about it and document it, you can make a plan to fix it, right? Number three, we can assess our protection of that equipment. So what are we talking about there? We're talking about short circuit protection, overload protection, coordination protection. Do you know that the equipment is safe? That's really it. That's where, are we underprotected or are we overprotected? Need to find it out, need to document it, and the IBE is a great way to do that. Number four, criticality assessment. Now, this was where it can get a little contentious because who defines what is critical? Well, it depends on who you ask, right? So you really need to understand here what impacts the process because it may be a critical part to, to this operator or to this group of, of, of managers, but if it really doesn't impact the overall process of, the, of your equipment, it probably can fall on a lower scale from a criticality standpoint, okay? So it's a great, and IBE gives you a chance to really do that criticality assessment. Number five, it helps you identify functional improvement areas, okay? This is where we can find areas to enhance. Maybe there's new technology. It can also help us find that surplus or that obsolete inventory. You know, think about this. Why are we carrying 10 spares if we only have one of them installed? That, is, that scenario exists right now in so many plants that people just don't know about it. So you need to have that. Or maybe why am I holding that part that's 50 years old? Don't need it anymore, right? And it can also identify gaps in your spares. You know, think about if you have 20 pieces of equipment installed and you only have one spare. Are you sleeping good in that scenario? Because I'm not. You know, how about no spares, right? At least if I know I have some equipment installed and I don't have spares, I'm managing that risk. I know that risk exists. Now, I may choose to accept that risk, but at least it's in, I'm in control there. So IBE does that. And finally, the big one for, for IBEs, it helps you prioritize your capital and your activity. Every plant is resource restricted. There's only so many people, there's only so much money, there's only so many things you can focus on. So an IBE will help at least lay that, that foundation to know where you need to take action to really make the most impact moving forward.